What we have here is we have another example on how to identify a quadratic equation um, in general form and how to find the vertex and zeros. So what we have here is another quadratic equation. We talked about it in the last one of how to find the vertex. And in this one, what we're going to do is find a vertex once again to find the x is the opposite of b over 2a. If we take the opposite of b, which would be negative 2 over 2 times negative 1, all right, we can realize that this x value, what we get, is going to equal <coughs> um, positive 1. Once we get our positive 1, we can find our y value by plugging in 1 back into the equation. So if we have negative 1 in here, plus 2 times 1, plus 3. And we have negative 1, plus 2, plus 3, and that's going to give us 4. So we have 1, 4. Now, another way to find out what our value is going to be, all right, is by going through over a little bit. Just put that together. There we go. All right. Bring that down. Put that right there. Is what we can do is we can complete the square. Okay. Now, in completing the square, um, one thing that we want to try to accomplish is we want to take and we want to get the x and y by itself. So what we can do is we can take y and we're going to subtract this 3 over here. Okay, and when we subtract 3, because where our goal is, we want something in standard form. And if you're not familiar, and that's why we're going to complete the square right here um, and putting it in standard form. This is not always necessary to do it, but I'm just showing you um, in case you want to know why or how to do it. Standard form, once again, is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Use standard form, and this is what the form is used in order to find the quadratic formula and a bunch of other formulas. So it's kind of important to know how to do. Um, when we have y equals negative 3, because I subtract 3 both sides, we have now negative x squared plus 2x. Now, in order to complete the square, what we need is our leading coefficient needs to be 1. So I need to factor out this negative 1. So I have x squared minus 2x, and we have this. From here, what we're going to do is I'm going to find the c value. I'm missing a c value, so now I want to find c. To find c, that's pretty simple, is because what we're going to do is we're going to take our b value and we're going to um, divide that by 2 and we're going to square it. Okay? Um, when we take that and divide that by 2 and square it, um, what happens is in this case, so this is going to equal c, I'm going to have negative 2 divided by 2, and we're going to square that, which gives us then c1. So we're going to rewrite this out. Now, in algebra, whatever you do on one side, we have to do the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a 2 in there, or sorry, 1 in there. But actually, in actuality, all right, we're going to put that 1 in here. We don't actually have a 1 because we have to take that 1 and multiply it by this negative. So in essence, what we have is not um, a positive 1. We actually have a negative 1 that we need to add. Oops. Keep on taking that. All right, get that minus 10. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to have this negative 3, and we're going to actually subtract 1 from this side. All right, so we're actually adding a negative 1. So what we have here, then, is y is equal to negative 4. And once we have that, now we can complete the square. We create a perfect square of x minus 1, that quantity squared. Simplifying it a little bit, we can now have right here, let me get rid of this. And we have y equals negative x minus 1 squared plus 4. All right, so we completed the square. Now, from here, we can identify what our vertex is. And we can see that our vertex, which is our h and k, is going to equal 1, 4. That is the same value, all right, the same grouping that we had, all right, found right there. So, once again, going through and completing the square, all right, we identify what the vertex is. Now, using all of this, all right, and having the square being completed, we can now go over here and find our zeros. Because from these zeros, if this is not factorable, we can take this and set this equal to zero. All right, so we're now find the zeros. We find our vertex. We'll set this equal to zero, and we'll solve. So I'm going to subtract 4 to this side. I have negative x minus 1 squared. 
We'll divide by the negative, and we'll have 4 equals x minus 1, the final squared. And now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root of both sides, we're going to plus or minus 4 equals x minus 1. And what about this? This is the last row. <laughs> I think it's in everything. And what we have then is going to be um, plus or minus 2, and we're going to add that 1 to the other side, same over here, and we get equaling x. So what we have are an x value, which would equal, we have 2 plus 1, and we have another x value, which is negative 2 plus 1. And so what we have then is 3 and negative 1. So two zeros, all right, of 3, 0, our x-intercept, and right here of negative 1, 0. We can verify this answer, all right, of these zeros by taking our original equation, and we can see if we can maybe factor this out, okay? Um, setting this one equal, and let me get rid of all this stuff that we have right there, okay? Is now I'm going to take this and set this equal to 0 and see if this does come out. So I'll factor out a negative, and I have x squared minus 2x minus 3. And it does look like it's going to be factorable. And what we have then is going to be um, x minus 3. And then we have x um, plus 1. Right there is a 0. Find the zeros, and x equals 3 and negative 1. And it appears that it's the same values we have right there. So we found the zeros here this way. Using those zeros, we can find, as we learned lies in our last tutorial, we can find our x value, and so on and so forth and we can find these different things. Another way we could do this is we didn't really need to, but if we wanted to, we can find the zeros using what is called the quadratic formula. Quad formula. The quad formula, if you recall, is opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I sing a little song, opposite of b plus or minus squared of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, hey, hey, over 2a, hey. Nice, right? So what we can do here is we can plug in our values, all right, opposite of b, which would be negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which would be 4, minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is 3, all over 2 times negative 1. Simplify that, and we'll get 3 and negative 1, these values right here. So went through several different processes, all right, of how to find the vertex. How to find the vertex right here. Oh, hello. I'm going to get back over here. How to find the vertex, all right, here and here. And we also found how to find standard form and how to use that to complete the find the vertex. And how to use standard form to find the zeros. And how to use the quadratic formula to find the zeros as well, along with factoring. So several different ways of finding the same thing. All are great and are used whenever you need them. All right. Um, I'm going to go through one more in the next tutorial, in our next lesson. So if you want to look at that, or maybe you, this will help you finish up your homework.